Welcome to Melstor Tech Tips. My name is Heiko Borchert and today I would like to give you some tips on how to choose the right archiving strategy. Melstor Server offers various ways to archive email. Choosing the right strategy depends on your email infrastructure as well as your objectives. When considering which archiving strategy is right for you, you should ask yourself the following question. Would you like to archive your email in a way that helps you to meet a growing number of regulations on email compliance, e-discovery and other legislation? Or do you want to map the folder structure created by users in their email client into the archive and therefore reducing the load on the email server at the same time? The great thing about Mailstore is that it allows you to do both. Let's first take a look at archiving all email as soon as it is sent and received. When this method is used, all emails are archived before being delivered to the user. For this to work, you will need to create a journal rule on your Microsoft Exchange server or within your Office 365 environment. All incoming and outgoing emails will then be automatically copied to a mailbox that you have specified. If you use another server, you can usually still utilize a rule to get this to work. See the implementation guides section on our Mailstore help for a comprehensive list of product-specific guides. You can now create a suitable archiving profile and Mailster will archive your email without any user being able to change or delete it beforehand. For you, this means that the integrity of the archive is ensured, helping you to meet regulations on email compliance, e-discovery and other legislation. The second method offered by Mailstore involves archiving user mailboxes. When this method is used, all email from specific user mailboxes is archived. This can be achieved through direct access to the email server or, if that is not possible, by archiving the email client. The advantage here is the ability to keep the specified folder structure in addition to archiving the complete history of the email in the user's mailbox. In addition, you can use automatic deletion rules to ensure, for example, that all emails older than two years are deleted from the mailbox after they have been successfully archived. This way, you can permanently reduce the load on the email server. The emails remain accessible to users via the archive and can be searched. You can, of course, combine the two archiving methods at no extra cost. Thanks to Mailster's internal deduplication feature, there's no need to double the amount of storage space. In the end, it's up to you to decide which archiving method to use. It all depends on your individual needs. However, I'd still like to give you a few recommendations for you to think about. Of course, archiving profiles can and should be executed automatically. When archiving incoming and outgoing email, we advise that you use the preset value of 300 seconds, which provides a 300 second pause between the execution of archive profiles. When archiving user mailboxes, we recommend that you perform this once a day, preferably at times of reduced load, such as in the evening or at night. If you opt to archive incoming and outgoing email, we advise that you archive your user mailboxes at least once to ensure that all existing email is archived and therefore permanently available for use by your company. In this step, you can also archive locally stored email like PST files, for example. You can find suitable implementation guides for your particular mail server and chosen archiving strategy in our Mailstore help. If you have any questions or you would like to arrange a personal consultation to discuss your individual circumstances, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are happy to help. We've now come to the end of our tech tips. Thanks for listening and see you next time.